In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look at five diamond transitions that are built into PowerDirector and they are in the alpha subcategory of all your transitions. So first of all, we'll show you how to get to them. You simply click on the transition room on the left side, the lightning bolt in the box, or you can press the F8 key. And then we start with all our transitions. I'm going to click the down arrow and we'll get to the subclass here called Alpha and click on that. And I have five transitions labeled Diamonds 1 through Diamonds 5. Now I can, I can click the mouse on any of these and I'll see a little bit of a preview of how they look. But I find the previews to be less than helpful. Uh, I like a real world situation so I can assess is this one I want to use or even modify because the alpha transitions are, are all subject to modification. So let's look at this in a different way. I've taken each of these five transitions and I've placed them on a series of images I took from an audio recording studio that I visited. And so let's go ahead. I'm going to play this and describe it and then we'll go back in detail and look at each of these five and what their advantages and disadvantages are, and at the end, a little bit about how to tweak them. So as I go ahead and play this, the first one, Diamonds 1, is crosshatch, and it fades in and out and then slowly rests on your new image. Diamonds number 2 is a one that drifts from left to right with a crosshatch pattern. Diamonds number 3 begins in the middle, and then it migrates to top and bottom. Diamonds number four, uh, a different kind of uh, pattern from the upper left to the lower right. And diamonds number five, I'm not sure exactly how that migrates. It seems like it starts in the middle somewhat and moves on. If you're like me, I look at these so quickly, I, I can't understand exactly how they work and if I want to use them. So let me take the scrubber and we're going to go look at each one separately. Diamonds number one. If you look carefully here, diamonds number one, as, I, as I, I move this frame by frame, it's a uniform crosshatch pattern that's three-dimensional. And the new image is on the edges of the pattern. I call this a, a waffle pattern. Uh, it reminds me of a waffle maker. And the odd thing about this one is it does fade in and out. It's not consistent. And I'll show you how they did that and how to remove that. If, like me, you don't like that part of it. Let's look at diamonds number two. Diamonds number two is kind of a nice pattern. It moves from left to right. And what it basically is, is a bunch of, I call it streets and rows at an angle, um, where the edge of it is these squares. And it moves from left to right. We have the original image to the right and the new image on the left. Diamonds number three, when, if you choose to use that, is I think a bit misnamed because it starts out with, we have diamonds here, but we also have a four quadrant oval. Uh, and the diamonds are kind of tied into where the ovals are. And it starts in the middle and then it merges to the top and bottom of the screen during the course of the transition. And so it clears it out horizontally from the middle. Diamonds number four is uh, hard to classify for me as a diamond, but you can see these triangle shapes. And uh, it begins in the upper left and then clears the image down to the lower right. This is probably the one I would be least likely to use because, again, it, it, it gives you kind of an odd transition, especially if you have any humans involved in the situation. That's diamonds four. Diamonds number five is kind of like the second diamonds two. It's a crosshatch pattern, but slightly modified. And uh, if I move here, it, uh, it, it seems to begin at the top and then a little bit on the right. And again, the, the way it merges is a little bit awkward, but uh, that's the pattern for diamonds number five. Let me spend just a couple minutes on how to change some of the features you find in each of these because the nice thing about them is they're all editable. So if I click on my transition 
and then I click on modify transition. We'll start with my waffle one, diamonds number one, and I get my transition settings box. I'm, I'm just going to, I can move this over if I want to see more, but I'm focusing on the transition designer. So I'll click here. And you notice this is the source image. You can't change this, but it's very, very uniform. One thing you can do if you want to make a modification of it is you can change, if I do click on keep aspect ratio, I can make it smaller. And notice what that does. That enlarges my crosshatch because I'm using a smaller segment of the image. And so if I would like to see it bigger, all I need to do is reduce the size uh, that I'm getting the the image from. And here's where we get this area where it's, it's kind of coming and going, which doesn't appeal to me. It might to you, but here's that in and out and in and out and in and out. And so if, if you see the progression line like this one and you want to change it, the temptation is to take the mouse and move these keyframes manually. That can be awkward. Here's an easier way, which we've dealt with in another lesson. You simply move the right arrow or left arrow to the keyframe and click on the gold diamond. I'm going to move there and click on the diamond for each of these. Go right, go right. I've got a couple more to do here. And I have to go back left. I missed one. There we go. And now I have a solid line. So if I go in this case, I can even make it large like it was to start with a smaller crosshatch pattern. Hit the play and now it's a smoother transition. Or you can change it any way you want. You could put one in where it's it's really fast and in the end it slows down or vice versa. Um, that's the advantages of keyframing. So that's two things that you can modify on that one. And if I want to save it, I can save it as my own. I can call it uh, uh, my diamond and click on OK. And now I have it saved in the transition room as my own modification. So we'll click on OK here. Uh, we'll look a little bit more at uh, modification, for example, on, let's try this last one here. Um, I'll click on uh, this transition and right click click on modify. Something that I would change on this one in the transition designer is you notice the pattern is not totally uniform in this case. And what I can do is I, with keeping the aspect ratio, I can determine what part of the pattern I really want to use here. So I can make it smaller and then move it around and that will change a little bit about uh, how it comes on the screen. I say, well, I like that, or I don't like this, or I want, remember that it's uh, whites and then grays and then blacks, or blacks, grays, and whites, depending on if you flip it. So that will determine what comes in first. Uh, that's the order of progression when you're using alpha transitions. The other thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a border on between this. It starts with uh, a green, which hardly ever works. And I would either take a gray, white, black, or maybe even a blue. Let's take a um, let's let's take a blue transition color here, and click on OK and see what the difference this makes. We have a lesson on this. Okay, so that's a way to change it. Uh, the blue draws a lot of attention of attention to itself. Let's try black and see what that does. Okay. And then again, if I want it much more simple, all I do, do is change the, the size of it. And I click on here again. And now I've got a much bigger but more simple pattern I could follow. And if I don't like this transition again, I can move to it with the arrow key and click on the diamond. And now it's just a perfect steady transition, which is kind of my favorite, as you can tell. So uh, I'll cancel that and click on no. But these, this is an overview of the five diamond transitions, how they're alike and different, and a couple ways to tweak them in CyberLink PowerDirector.